Hickory Motor Speedway has a rich history of accomplished drivers. The legends of Hickory stand out in the minds of every race fan, from the early days of Junior Johnson and Bobby Isaac to the more recent era of Dale Jarrett and Mark Martin. The great races of the past are forever sketched in our memories, but the drivers of the USAR Hooters Pro Cup Series are knocking on the door looking to make some history of their own. Shane Huffman, the 99 Hickory Motor Speedway track champion, is looking for his first win, but Bobby Gill is looking strong and ready to start the game of follow the leader. United Speed Alliance Racing continues its headlong rush into the new millennium. And round nine brings us to Hickory, North Carolina for the State Fair brand Corn Dogs 250 presented by Johnsonville Broadwurst. And as we look down upon the starting grid for this event, we cannot help but think about the long list and the rich tradition of winners here at this racetrack. Today, a new name will be added. A new face will take its place in the yearbook. Hello everybody, I'm Brian Dreber, and I'm standing here among some of the usual suspects for a Hooters Pro Cup race. The problem is they're not in the usual places. Charlie Ford, 10th in points on the last row. Next to him, Richard Petty's nephew, Trent Owens, in the 1-800-B Petty car. And a little further forward, a series champion, Jeff Agnew, sits on the outside of the next to last row. And inside of him, the current rookie points leader, David Buggy Pletcher in the Big Daddy's barbecue sauce car. You know, if you miss qualifying and set up by a little bit here at this place, Buggy, you missed it by a lot. What are you doing back here? Well, we did miss it by a little bit. Um, the field is real tight and a bunch of great drivers, and uh, hopefully we can get this big daddy Chevrolet up there in the top five or ten. Well, and, you know, the little mini war that you've got going on with all the rookies as the rookie points leader, last time you started in the back and caught up to all of them. They're all in front of you tonight. Yeah, they're a bunch of great rookies, and uh, I'm kind of used to starting in the back. We don't qualify as well as we should, but hopefully we can be there at the end and keep her in one piece. All right, David Pletcher, good luck to him tonight. And we're at the back of the field, just like Buggy Pletcher, going to be trying to work our way forward. Let's do that right now and go to my partner, Bill Venturini. Thanks, Brian. I'm here with Shane Huffman. Shane, I've had the pleasure of practicing a lot of laps around this racetrack, but I've never been able to race in competition. You, on the other hand, you're a past champion. As a matter of fact, a very dominant past champion. What's that going to mean for you tonight? Well, I hope it means that everything's going to go our way. You know, sometimes they do and sometimes they don't. I think the, the this racetrack is a two-groove racetrack, and I think with these heavier cars, you will see a lot of cars moving up to the high groove. And uh, hopefully we can just keep this Johnsonville Ford Taurus up towards the front, you know, all night and do as good a job as them as we can. They've been real supportive of us and just do the best job we can for Johnsonville and everybody involved. Well, we know with your experience, you will. All right, let's go up to the front with Stephen Cox. Well, I talked to Andy before the show, and I said, where's the magic? I mean, ever since Lakeland at the beginning of the year got his first win out there, and it's been tough going ever since. Will you tell me what happened? Uh, well, we, um, we, we was kind of a shock to be up here on the outside pole. Um, we didn't practice as well as we'd like. We changed three shocks and put new tires on for, uh, for qualifying and, and wound up up here. So uh, I guess we messed up, though. We didn't change that last shock, and uh, maybe we'd have had a shot at the pole there. But like I said, Clayton had a great lap, and... Uh, Proud of that, and but hopefully we'll get this natural fresh spring water for tours up in Victory Lane, and I believe we'll have a, have a shot at it tonight. I think the car's going to be good all night, so hopefully we'll have a good race. You know what he's not saying is that he set a track record. He was the first guy to break the old track record. The next guy to break the old track record is Clayton Rogers. Now, Clayton, you tried real hard to punch a hole in the turn one wall last year. Any thoughts going through your head as you head into turn one? Well, I just know that that rubber is not as soft as it looks up there. I hit about as hard as you can hit here, and uh, you know that was a rookie mistake and. Uh, Hopefully we're through with those. We don't want to make any more of those. And, uh, you know, we had a good lap, and I just want to take this time to uh, say something about Kenny Irwin and uh, our thoughts and prayers are with his family. And hopefully we can come away with a win tonight and do some uh, donuts on the front stretch and a victory lap for, uh, for him. And that is our Discount Auto Parts pole sitter, Clay Rogers. And let's, before we get started with this race, kind of set the scene for you in terms of the standings for the season as we get to the halfway mark. Super Mario leads the points, but has not won a race. Lindley has won two, he's second, tied with Bobby Gill, who has won four races. Yeah, and look at sixth through 10th, Brian. There's only 23 points separating these five guys. Tyler. 
and start your engines. All right, Tyler, with a little bit of help, he got him going. I think somebody has to start his heart right about now, too. That's a big <laughs> job for a little guy, but hopefully it'll be a moment that he will remember and that tonight will be a moment we will all remember here at America's most famous short track. We'll be back with Green Flag racing in a moment. The USAR Hooters Pro Cup Series is brought to you by Hooters Restaurants, Hooters, Delightfully tacky yet unrefined. And by Jackaroo Sausage. Jackaroo tastes so great they named a steakhouse after it. By Naturally Fresh Dressing. It's not just our name, it's our promise. And by Miller Lite, the great taste of a true Pilsner beer. Welcome back to Hickory Motor Speedway. The cars are circling the racetrack, so we still have some time to talk about a lot of things before the race gets started. One is the weather, the Renegade Race Trailers Weather Report and the weatherman Bill Venturi. Yeah, that's a little deceiving. It was so hot and humid today, I had to change my shirt twice. Definitely a steam bath here at Hickory Motor Speedway, one of the most famous, one of the raciest tracks on the circuit. Well, that's because it's so small and it's so tight. You, you're definitely rubbing fenders and, and pushing bumpers all day long. Look at the qualifying times. The 26 cars that got into the grid by times were separated by a quarter of a second. That's why Buggy Pletcher yeah. said the field was tight. Uh, unbelievable. And you got to realize that the, the pole position set a track record. So it's a really tight field. Our Jackaroo Sauce's starting grid starts with Clay Rogers and Andy Thurman, whom we met on the front row. And then row number two, Stacy Perrier, who's had a pole of his own this year. And Bill Plemons Jr. still looking for that elusive first win, the veteran driver. Inside row three, Hal Goodson, uh, new driver in that car starting this race, and Sean Studer from Concord, North Carolina, and a U Chocolate Chevrolet. B.J. McLeod goes back on row number four in the Carter Grandel car with Bobby Gill. There he is, the man who has won four races out of the five that he's finished this year in the PGT Industries Ford. Inside row five, Mike Herman in the Carolina Truck Repair Pontiac, and next to him, Mark Nesbitt in the State Fairbrand Corn Dog Chevrolet. Back on row number six, Regan Smith, rookie driver out of Mooresville, North Carolina, and Marty Lindley in the 01, carrying discount auto parts this week. Row seven, Shane Huffman, my favorite, I think, who, you know, my, my money's on him tonight because this is his home track. And next to him, John Wood, the rookie who uh, I promise I won't pick on tonight. Toby Robertson, rookie out of Winston-Salem, North Carolina, on row eight with Chris Diamond as he makes a return to the field. Dexter Knipe, also a former track champion here in the 55 car, goes with Jeremy Bowser on row number nine. Row 10, another rookie that's won this year, Brian Vickers, and then carrying the new sponsor, Naturally Fresh Dressings and Dips uh, Chevrolet. And Mario Goslin, Super Mario, back away in the field. Mike Laughlin Jr. inside on row number 11 in the Valinai Tools entry number seven. And Jabe Jones goes in the Jackaroo 09 next to him. Starting inside row 12, uh, row 12, Steve Christian in the Lucas Oil Product Chevrolet. And next to him, Don Satterfield, my old buddy with the Hawksaw Blade Chevrolet. Then Marty Ward goes on row number 13, the former crew chief and veteran driver with Jimmy McLean in the three car this week. Then Jerry Rector and Keith Woody got in in a qualifying race. They did have a last chance race, a pair of them in fact, because on row number 15, we had Tim Edwards and Joe Harrison Jr. who came out of the second qualifying race. Then the provisional starters, and look at these guys. They're the ones <laughs> I was talking to back you, there. Yeah, you believe these are provisional starters? Dave Pletcher, Jeff Agnew, you know, past champion in this in this series. It gives you an idea how the starting field was, how tight it was. Charlie Ford and Trent Owens round out the top 34. A list of those who did not qualify for this race also tells some stories. Karen Schultz in the Naturally Fresh car did not make the field. Curtis Davis, for the first time this season, that talented young rookie driver, did not make the field, along with Tim Clayton and the others. Look at John it. Curley John in the yeah. Team Concept 2000 car, did big disappointment for them. John Kinder, Don Sprouse, I can't believe they're guys that didn't make this race. On board with Keith Woody in the Sandvik Coromant Company car, with Woody riding on the dash from the movie yeah. Toy Story. Hang on, Woody. Steven Christian the Lucas Oil Products number zero is going to carry a camera for us, as he always does, and carry it well, I might add. He's looking straight into the back end of Mike Laughlin Jr.'s Valonite car. Marty Lindley in the Discount Auto Parts, uh, carrying yeah. that sponsorship this week. New sponsorship for Marty Lindley this week, too. Discount Auto Parts uh, Ford. Two-time winner this season. And Mark Nesbitt in the sponsor car, the State Fair brand Corn Dogs number 30 will be on board with him here tonight as well. And finally, 
rounding out our onboard looks from the front row. Yeah. Do you know where this camera is? This camera is mounted in the rear spoiler. First time they cut a hole in the spoiler and have this camera. This is going to be a neat shot tonight. We'll be enjoying that and a lot more as we get set to go to the green flag here. John Flynn of Johnsonville waving it. And we are underway behind the pole sitter, Clay Rogers. And by the way, the feedback from the website, about 50-50. <laughs> We're going to keep it going. Email us, let us know if you like Clay or Clayton better for the number two. I promise that because he was on the pole tonight, it's Clay all night long. There we go. It's unanimous from the booth. Clay Rogers leads the first lap, but he's getting a challenge. Andy Thurman is certainly getting a challenge from the 45 and a very you know, noticeable difference. Hal Goodson, a veteran driver, even though he's a young guy, gets behind the wheel of that Carlin Financial card, stepped it up enough to get Whoa. it a throw and a first spin already in the field here and smoke all over the racetrack. Chris, Chris Diamond, Diamond from yeah. the back. Charlie Ford sneaks by in the Sun Graphics number 14. Chris Diamond, who has a lot of laps here at this racetrack, gets it pointed in the right direction, but not, a, not until after some pretty heavy damage. Well, it's hard to see from this angle what actually happened. You can see there was, what? The contact in the back of the car is from hitting the inside wall, but usually at that point of the racetrack, let's see what we see better on this angle. Uh, it's already started, but 99% of the time on a start of a race like that is usually what happens is he may not, he may have missed the gear, just not got up to speed or, 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 or something, and the guy behind him just kind of gives him a little tap, and you're coming off the corner full throttle of the car. It has to spin. First it's caution of the night. We'll be right back. Under caution here at the State Fair brand Corn Dogs 250. Let's go downstairs, talk to the crew chief for Chris Diamond. Daryl, talk about the damage and talk about how it occurred. Well, the first of the race here, you know, you know, everybody gets is bunched up and you know, we 16 car got a little impatient there, and yeah, you know, I think he stuck it in there three wide and got into us, turned us around, you know, got into the inside wall there, but you know, it don't look too bad. I believe it's gonna be okay. Well, we'll see when we go back to green. You know, it ain't hitting no wheels or nothing, so just push the rear clip in a little bit, so I think we'll be okay. Boy, it almost sounds like I knew what I was talking about. <laughs> <laughs> Scary. Well, he pointed uh, a shaky finger at Mario Goslin, who indeed was coming through the field. Dexter Knipe just missed down on the inside. As we go back to green and look at our discount auto parts field summary, Stacy Perrier has moved up a spot or two, and there you can see the rest of the top ten. Bobby Gill actually lost a position from eighth to ninth, but we always keep our eyes on that number five car, the black car with the green numbers. On the outside, Hal Goodson in the Carlin Financial car and Bill Clemens Jr. You know, Hal Goodson, I was watching him in practice today, and I thought he had a good shot at the pole because actually I was timing him. He had the fastest laps in practice, and this guy knows how to run this track. Back when they ran the Hooters late model series here, he sat on the pole with a new track record and led most of the laps in the race here. So this guy knows how to get around this racetrack. And I think, you know, I just, I think he's gonna be a guy that they're gonna have to reckon with tonight, you know. Uh, I, I know we've we made the point that Bobby Gills won four out of the last five, four out of five if he finishes, but I think Hal Goodson's gonna give a run for money tonight. Well, there's a lot of very talented drivers who have a history at this racetrack. <laughs> Bobby Gill, on the other hand, has not won a Hooters Pro Cup race at Hickory. And uh, so he may be a little bit down on experience at this track. Did you see that? Just, they got into the corner, and Mike Herman just got into the left rear of Sean Studer. Got him sideways, but he brought it back under control. Good job. Pushing and shoving a little bit. That is Hooters Pro Cup I, racing at his best. I, I told you, I, I knew I was going to like that shot because you, you're looking right out that spoil. Look at that. That's a pretty neat shot. Very neat shot from on board with Andy Thurman as we okay. see just the corner of Stacy Perrier's car and watch Bill Plemons Jr. come inside on both Perrier and Goodson. So Plemons is quick out there tonight and wants to show us. Well, he, yeah, he told he said earlier that when we were, I was talking to him before qualifying, he, he felt that he had a car to beat. And, and you know this guy, this, he's the wild man. You know, he puts the war paint on and it seems like when he puts the helmet on, man, he's out of control. He's going to the front. Clay Rogers, however, showing us why he was the pole sitter, holding on to about a one-second lead, and it doesn't matter who's in second place. Clay Rogers has skated away and has opened up a comfortable gap. You can see about six or seven car lengths while the battle goes on behind him. Here is the reigning track champion in the number 84 car out there, Shane Huffman out of Hickory, North Carolina, the Johnsonville Bratwurst car. 
And another look at Goodson per year, and now Bobby Gill running the low line inside. Yeah, it, it seems like these guys ha haven't made up their mind if they want to run inside or low. I mean, the inside group or the outside group. But one thing about this racetrack, even though it's small, it is a two-groove racetrack. You can pass on the outside. As a matter of fact, sometimes the outside lane is a preferred line around here. Indeed, many drivers have shown, and we heard Shane Huffman say that with these heavier cars, meaning heavier than the ones he's used to racing here, that that second groove will definitely come in up on the outside. They'll keep uh, the marbles off of it. It'll be a wide race track, and we should see some good two-groove side-by-side racing here before the evening is over. We may see it quite soon, in fact. Yeah, usually when you're on this small of a track, you don't get that type of racing, but the way this, this track is designed in Bangkok, Oh, Chris, Chris Diamond, Diamond up in the outside wall this time, and he brings out our second caution of the evening on lap number 20. The Lake Electric number 99 has got the yellow flag waving, and Fluid is on the track. Want to go to break? Sure. We'll be right back with more USAR Hooters Pro Cup Racing action. Stand by black. A balmy evening here at Hickory Motor Speedway. Hi, Ashlyn. Ashlyn Graham, one of the area marketing managers for Hooters Restaurants with us here tonight. Let's go back downstairs. Boy, Chris, you seem just plagued from the very beginning of this race. Give me the story. Oh, we just in traffic there, and, you know, it's got turned around there to start with. Just, uh, just a little bit of impatience there, but uh, it, just, uh, it might have worked out for the better, though. We had the engine trouble right there, and we was in the back where we didn't cause a lot of trouble for everybody else. So. We just have to get this uh, PSA uh, healthcare Chevrolet back together and try again wherever we can uh, scrape up enough money to go. All right. Chris Diamond out of the race, a disappointment for him. Some Bobby Gill fans in the stands there waving at our cameras as we get ready to go back, uh, set to go back to the green flag behind Clay Rogers, who is done a masterful oh. job, a very veteran-like job <laughs> yeah, of jumping well, everybody what, uh, on the start. What a nice start by Clay Rogers on that restart. Bill Clemens Jr. poised in second position with outside front row starter Andy Thurman. Then Hal Goodson, you can see, and Bobby Gill has moved from eighth to sixth. And Regan Smith, rookie driver, rounds out the top ten as we look at our discount auto parts field summary there. Hickory Motor Speedway. A lot of the drivers say it's an honor just to, to race, race here. Yeah. And you see that shot there? It gives you an idea how fast, even though this is a small track, you don't realize how fast these cars are going until you see that shot. These guys are still clipping along coming off that corner. Up to this point in the season, the dominant car and driver has been Bobby Gill, leading 517 laps, more than 200 better than Steven Christian. Yeah, yeah but did you see, and I'm going to give you credit, a rookie, Clay Rogers, is in the top four for most laps led for the year. We're not really giving yeah, Clay no, Rogers no, he, he's a earned it. He's planet, earned it, believe a, me. A lot of credit. These guys have earned it, and I think Clay Rogers, uh, as much as anyone, has earned a lot of credit and uh, certainly some notice uh, by the racing community. You, you know, speaking of the rookies and the veterans, which we've been playing along with all year, we've had a lot of fun with it. Boy, I felt like I needed some armor plate this afternoon in the pits. The rookies about <laughs> attacked me today. <laughs> they were hammering on you. <laughs> he says, okay, that's it. Especially gotta, John yeah, Wood. John Wood, I know. I told him, but I like his haircut better. I like this, yeah. this hairstyle he's got. This is much better than what he's had. But boy, he about, about definitely uh, beat me up today. But I said, all right, that's it. I'm done picking on the rookies. John was funny. <laughs> nah, I'm not. He I'm was not. acting like he was hurt. He said, oh, yeah. my self-esteem. How can I face my friends? He was pretty funny, John Wood. Beating on Bill Venturini for picking on the rookies here, but the rookie drivers have certainly been a revelation and have indeed been the story of the 2000 season, along with Bobby Gill, who, except for three DNFs, we've mentioned already, he has won four of the five races that he finished. When you're four for five, that's not too bad. Yeah, no doubt about it. But, you know, he's battling Hal Goodson, and, and I, like I said earlier, the, he, Hal was really quick in practice, you know, and, and Bobby Gill is using the inside line right now. And, and I'm not sure which line's you know, more advantageous right now. You, you know, some guys are working high, some guys are working low. One thing that uh, Bobby Gill came over to me, and one thing I've already noticed about a lot of the cars, noticeably Clay Rogers, and we mentioned it last time, Bobby Gill, no sponsor on the quarter panel. And he said, hey, we need a sponsor. And I said, well, what do you mean? You know, you've got PGT Industries all over your car. 
they gave us enough money to build our new car. We're going race to race on what we win. So right. that, that's true of a lot of the drivers Yeah, but out that there. ain't too bad. He's won uh, enough races. Yeah, he's he doing can, better he's than most doing of them. Most. <laughs> Speaking of rookies, uh, you know, you've got Brian Vickers right now leading John Wood. And Mike Laughlin, Jr., who started 20th, has been moving through the field pretty enthusiastically and carefully and he's up in there in contention and look who's under underneath Mario Goslin. that's Jimmy McLean and I love his sponsor potty pine bear <laughs> well <laughs> those are pretty interesting and a lot of them here at the racetrack for Jimmy McLean the learning through entertainment sponsorship and it's potty time bear back to the lead and Bill Clements Jr. has closed yeah. up as close as anyone has to Clay Whoa. Rogers in this race so far Definitely Bill Plemons, uh, a man on a mission right now. He's definitely closing in on Clay, on Clay Rogers. Points leader Mario oh. Goslin getting a nudge there from Jimmy McLean. Mario Goslin has been running this old race car, and he's got a new one ready to bring out. And I said to him, you know, Mario, this car has got nine lives. It's like a cat with nine lives. This is race number nine. He said, that's right. We're bringing the new one out next time. We're not taking any chances. As Woody is Woody. hanging on tight in the Sandvik.com car of Keith Woody Jr. Still the early going here of the State Fair oh. brand Corn Dogs. <laughs> yeah. 250. You, you, Yo, Woody sliding across slide the dash there. there. You, yeah, I can definitely tell you he was definitely sideways in the corner on that move. Watching some close quarters action now as John Wood follows the points leader Mario Goslin around the racetrack. Super Mario, just so so Mario in qualifying here today. Started back in the 21st position. And another look at Woody. Keith Woody. And Woody the Cowboy. I, I'm, I was looking at that in-camera, uh, in-car shot, and I was watching the tack. You see, I don't know if you could tell, it was getting up to about 7,400 RPMs. A look at Dexter Knipe, number 55. The guy with a lot of laps here. And Charlie Ford in the number 14 Sun Graphics car. Having a good year. Well, I think, we're honestly, we're ready to start breaking into the top five. We've been in position a couple times. It's sort of like a... a, a a learning curve. You get into the top ten, then you work a little bit better, and then you start moving into the top five. And once you get into the top five, then you work you're in position to win a race. Uh, we're not in a position at this present time. We haven't been, but I think we're ready to take that next step up. You know, Charlie made the comment. You, it's a, it's a progression, and it is. You know, the difference between tenth and first is not that big. It's it's actually a very small thing that happens. And, and all of a sudden, you know, you're working on your car week in, week out. All of a sudden, now you're running fifth. And then all of a sudden, you know, you do a little more, a little this, a little that. And all of a sudden, now you're running third. It's not something that just, bam, happens overnight. It's a, it's a very slow, small progression. And it's not much of a, not much that you have to do to make that step. Watching Jeff oh. Agnew for a moment there. But now a spin on the racetrack as Buggy Pletcher just Tim was Edwards. able to sneak past Tim Edwards, who went around on the track. And... So Tim Edwards in the Edwards Racing, number 12, facing the wrong direction. Another I need a sponsor car with nothing on the hood or quarter panels as oh, we take yeah, another look. You can see, you know, Tim Edwards was just starting to come down a little and, and Buggy Pletcher was there. That was certainly definitely a racing accident. Buggy didn't think he was going to cut down and there was nothing Tim could do. Tim Edwards trying to get his car pointed the right direction. That gives us an opportunity to take a pause and we'll be right back. House is packed and rocking here at Hickory Motor Speedway this evening. Yeah, and look at uh, Brian. There's some free Johnsonville hats flying, but also there's some sheet metal flying in the pits. Well, the 12 car will get his due. Tim Edwards was punted in the rear by David Pletcher. Well, that's what the officials said anyway, and Pletcher is going to pay the price. Not only does he have a lot of body damage on the front left, but he's going to make the best use of a stop and go penalty that he can. That's what this is. This is not a normal pit stop. David has been penalized with the stop and go, so you might as well change everything while you're in. Big Daddy's barbecue sauce number 51 and the rookie points leader back out on the track. Yeah, look at Stacy Perrier has got a flat tire. He's going to have to hurry because they're getting ready to go green and he's got to get in and get this tire change. So well, he may lose a lap here. Yeah, he's hurrying as fast as he can. Stephen Cox is waiting for him. Well, Stacy Perrier had some problems out on the track a moment ago. They're going to bring the car in. 
and take a look under the right side. It looks as if he may have lost a right front tire. We can't tell from our vantage point, guys, but I know what they did do is reach over and grab the roll bar inside the uh, right side of the cockpit there and try to pull the car up in the air. So Stacy Perry is gonna go back out and I don't think he's gonna make it out before he goes a lap down. No, indeed, he will not make it back out, and he'll go a lap down as we take a look at our Goodyear full field rundown. Brian Vickers running in 11th spot. You saw the top 10 a moment ago. Rookie John Wood and rookie Keith Woody are out there in the next five. Jay Jones having a pretty good run there in 21st position right now in the Jackaroo car, and you can see Chris Diamond is already out, and Buggy Fletcher is last right now spot behind Joe Harrison Jr. who's struggling a little bit after getting into the field through a qualifying race. You On know, board with Thurman watching Bobby Gill. Yeah, and look at it. Whoa, oh, and down goes Jimmy, Jimmy McLean into the infield. Quickly recovering and getting the learning through entertainment car back out on the track. Let's see if we can see in the replay what happened here. All right, it just looks like Jimmy got into the corner a little too hard, got on the brakes. The car came around. It didn't look like he had any help right there. See, Christian was right behind him, but it didn't appear from that shot as though there was any contact. And Jimmy McLean, minimal damage as well. On board with uh, Keith Woody, and we're looking at it. Zoom. Out of the picture goes the 58 of Jeremy yeah. Bowser. Good, good move by Jeremy Bowser to miss that wreck. <laughs> Go Bobby Gill. Well, Bobby Gill has been going pretty good so far this season in the Hooters Pro Cup Series. Now a world that few of you at home ever get to see the help we get from the truck. Stay tuned for more of the State Fair brand Corn Dogs 250. Presented by Johnson Mill Bratwurst here in Hickory, North Carolina. State Fair brand Corn Dogs 250 at Hickory Motor Speedway presented by Johnsonville Broadwurst. Some VIPs on hand with us here tonight. Rick Akum, the president of Hooters. Mike McNeil, the VP of Marketing. And there's not a lot of room even around those guys, right, Stephen? Well, you're right, Brian. There's a lot of cars down here and really no place to put them. Hickory Motor Speedway is not really a very big racetrack. So what do you do with 30-plus cars? You wrap them around. Take a look down in turn number one and two. Pit row makes a left-hand turn. You actually re-enter the racetrack after a pit stop by heading out in turn two, not turn one. It is really, really tight down here. We're back. Work down on B.J. McLeod's Carter Grandel car on uh, the infield. And let's listen in on Andy Thurman. We're monitoring his radio. Try and get a good start here. And Gil will probably try and jump you. I'm ready for that old Gil. <laughs> I'm ready for that old Gil. <laughs> <laughs> well, you sure know he's there if you're a USAR Hooters Pro Cup driver. Clay Rogers is, uh, was, and remains the leader with Bill Plemons Jr. Some car lengths behind, and Sean oh. Studer's Yoohoo Chocolate Drink, car number 36, also with a cut down tire. And he's limping around the racetrack right now while Clay Rogers sets sail, did a great job on the restart again. Yeah, Sean Studer's going to have a problem getting down into pit road because he's this trying. Is such a tight racetrack. He's trying to get down yeah, there down. and stay out of the way. And no caution, he makes it. Clay Rogers, who we have talked about uh, quite enthusiastically over the first eight races of the season as being a very heady, intelligent young driver, twice earning a pole position in the USAR Hooters Pro Cup Series is doing some very interesting things, uh, not only behind the wheel of his race car, but in setting it up for the different race tracks. So oh, a very veteran-like guy. Buggy Pleasure trying to make it three wide coming off the corner. It does not work right now. And Bobby Gill just staying out of trouble, making some room. Mike Herman Jr. doing some of the same. Let's go back downstairs. Stephen Cox with Sean Studer's car in the pits. Sean Studer has not only had to change right side tires because he cut down a tire a few moments ago under green flag racing, but also they've had to cut away part of the bodywork on the front right, and now they're trying to get the hood to stay down. They're not checking under the hood. They're just trying to get the hood to stay on the race car so they can get back out on the track. Now, Sean has already lost, say, five, maybe six laps here in the uh, pit area, so they're just going to go ahead and put on left side rubber as well. Big problems down here for Sean Studer. 
brother Tommy and the rest of the crew trying to get the 36 car back out on the racetrack. Certainly they'll stop again, hopefully under caution as yeah. we watch Shane Huffman, the reigning track champion here at Hickory Motor Speedway. He's this week's driver feature and grew up in Hickory, North Carolina. Well, racing is something I've always loved. My uncle was racing when I was, you know, three or four years old. And, uh, and that's basically the reason that I wanted to race right there. It's always been in my blood. Uh, when I was three years old, I think I told mom I was going to be a race car driver. Shane went from racing go-karts to stock cars. And this year he entered the Pro Cup season with a new team and crew chief. He's starting to understand me and my driving style better. And, and, that's, and that's what it's all about, you know. Uh, a crew chief's got to get used to a driver because Different drivers want totally different things, and, and they have different fields that they like. It's kind of took a, you know, a while for the chemistry to develop, but we're uh, we're getting there, and, and everything's coming together nicely. Now it's not two teams; it's one team, and and uh, everybody's gelling, and it's it's just getting better. Even with a rough start this season, Huffman is making his way to the front. When you when you get in that race car and that and that. Flagman throws the green flag, boy, I mean, it's just like something else, you know, something else takes control, and, and uh, it's like two different people, really, you know. Uh, it's all serious then and, and all about winning and getting to the front, no matter where you're at, and just being the best that you can be. And that's what Shane is doing. Last year, he was track champion here at Hickory Motor Speedway and loves winning, but also truly enjoys just being around racing. I just love being at the racetrack. I love, I love being around race cars. I mean, it's just, uh, I, some, some people have asked me, you know, what, what are you going to do if, if driving don't work out? You know, if you can't make the future in that, well, I'm going to, I'm going to be working on race cars because that's what I love to do. I mean, I just, I just love everything about it. I love being at the racetrack. I love being around the people at the racetrack because I feel like people at the racetrack all have something in common, and that's racing and. and uh, that, that brings everybody closer together right there. Shane Huffman carrying the sponsor car colors of Johnson Anybody Hill Broadwurst. Anybody making like real big moves, Ron, as far as back up through the field, some of the fast cars in the back? Negative. The only guy that's made any moves is Gil. Everything else is almost follow the leader. That's Andy Thurman asking his crew chief if anyone's making any moves. And he's not. Nah, the only one making any moves is Bobby Gill, but ah, I'm not so sure about that. <laughs> We, we noticed a few other people coming up through the pack, didn't we? Yeah, Jeff Agnew and Charlie Ford noticeably from the next to last and last rows respectively are making a big move. But you know what, Thurman's guys aren't quite paying attention to them yet. They're still a little ways back as we watch the 45 of Hal Goodson and the 7 of Mike Laughlin Jr. and look at our discount auto parts field summary. And look who's running fifth uh, was uh, Mike Herman Jr. Good run for him right now. But this is his one of his uh, his home old home track. He's now considers Concord his home track, but this is where he grew up at Hickory Motor Speedway. Ninth and 10th place battle right here. By the way, I want to mention, a lot of you email us uh, at our website, usarprocup.com, and we'd like to thank Stephen, a young fan, for his kind words, and for all of you that uh, sent in your votes on whether it should be Clay or Clayton Rogers, uh, keep them coming. We'll try to get to them all and answer them as best we can, but we sure love hearing from the fans out there that are watching or uh, Clicking on to the website, usarprocup.com. And I'm sure there's a lot of more fans out there that know how to work that computer better than I do. <laughs> <laughs> and points leader Mario Goslin racing with Brian Vickers. There he is just to the right of Stephen Christians on board and now drops in front. The number 16 car up the points leader, Mario Goslin, who joked last time they ought to pay to practice and qualify and race for fun because he's been a lot better in practice and qualifying than he has getting to victory lane. But this time he didn't even he didn't even practice and qualify all that well. In well, fact, uh, he started 21st. Yeah, I got to tell you, what happened to him, though, was he was practicing, and after practice, before qualifying, they had a problem with the clutch. They pulled that transmission out and replaced the clutch before qualifying. He told me, don't over, he says, every time you come in and talk to me before qualifying, I have a problem. He says, so now, from now on, stay away. So I promised Mario, all right, no more talking to you. Isn't it funny how the drivers get yeah. like that? I wonder if Steven Christian was waving me off for a few races, because every time I talked to him, he had some kind of bad luck. Again, here you can see how some of the drivers have moved up as we look at a, a start positions versus where they're running. But Clay Rogers has, has really been so comfortable out in the front. Clemens gets close to yeah. him. A few others have, too. but. He just hangs out out there. Well, you said, you know, notice how, how comfortable Clay, Rod, Clay Roger, uh, <laughs> Clay, I, I keep wanting to call him Clayton. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> no, no, I promised him I wouldn't. <laughs> how Clay is, you know, you said comfortably in the lead, but 
look at Bill Clemens Jr. That guy has been dogging him like for 25 laps. He's not giving him any room. We talked about that second groove starting to come in. You're yep, seeing, seeing that seeing side it. by side racing that we talked about, and it is happening out there right now with Steven Christian on the inside of Hal Goodson and also of Mario Goslin, John Wood trying to follow Christian through. So we've got two by two racing going on out there. One thing you got to realize, Brian, about this racetrack. Now watch these guys. They come off the corner. They're still turning the wheel, turning the wheel. Oh, they never even really get the car straight. So this is a racetrack that's going to take its toll physically on these drivers because you never get a break here. It's such a fast, tight, you know, racetrack that you're, you're, you're never relaxed. You're racing all the way around the racetrack. And I don't care if you're racing for the lead or 20th, you're racing somebody. Whoa, oh, Steven oh, yeah. Christian <laughs> with a little bit of a knock there on Hal Goodson, but enough to send him around. As you said, they're always turning, and yep. Goodson got uh, got a whole 180 going there as he's now heading backwards on the racetrack to Carlin Financial number 45. We mentioned ah! it as his. Oh, he overshot the infield a little bit there. Come on, Hal, bring it back. He was trying to spin the car around so he didn't lose a lap, and he, he went a little more than 360, but he didn't hit anything. Well, Goodson gets it going again. Here's another look. And Ooh. contact, but it yeah. seemed like, I don't, you know, that's. Well, you call it one of them that, racing that's deals. A, that's, a, that's a racing deal. I mean, there's no doubt about it. Like I said, this racetrack is so tight and so small. This has to happen. You can't avoid this. Goodson turns in. Christian's there. Little oh, yeah. contact, and it doesn't take much. No, and you can see Christian's car. Actually, he, you can see his car made a nosedive as he got in in the corner, which shows me that he tried to get on the brakes hard to stop it. Just got in and just touched it. Let's see it here. On board. Yeah, you see, yep. you see he was off the throttle. He was on the brake, and he just touched it. In any case, Stephen Christian continues on his way as we look at the faces behind the wheel of the top 10 drivers. Clay Rogers, the rookie, Bill Clements Jr., the veteran, and the rest. We'll be right back. Pit stop action here as we get close to the halfway mark. Some of these drivers are going to come in and make their changes here. Short pitting, I guess you'd call it. Mike Laughlin Jr., Stephen Christian. There's Vickers, John Wood. Man, everybody's the, coming down yeah. pit road right well, now. Almost everybody. Yeah. A lot of guys are staying out. And uh, well, we'll have a second round here coming up in just a minute. And uh, of course, Stephen Cox is down there on pit road. And he's having a trouble picking where to be. Stephen, where are you, buddy? Now, Mario Goslin was actually not supposed to be this far forward on pit row. However, his Carter Grandel teammate, B.J. McLeod, requested that they switch spots. So B.J. is way down pit row toward the rear of the field, and Mario Goslin is way up toward the front of the field. That'll help him get out just a little bit quicker, but not before they dial in a couple of rounds of wedge on the right rear and make a four-tire stop. So Mario Goslin comes in on lap 100. Now, guys, this means he's going to have to finish this race if he's got a one-stop strategy, which is the uh, pretty much the normal in Hooters Pro Cup racing. He's going to have 150 laps on those tires at the end of the show. Yeah, you can look, uh, Jay Jones is in there, and they're making a chassis change on the Panther bar. The same thing on the 87 car of uh, to Toby Robertson. They're doing the same thing. Everybody's making chassis changes right now, and that's why when you short, sh like you say, you short pit, that's what the advantage of doing that is. Let's go back down to Stephen Cox with more pit road action, Stephen. Hal Goodson, the 45 car is in. He is the 95 and 97 All-Pro champ. This guy's run a number of Bush races as well, so he's got a lot of laps and a number of laps here at Hickory Motor Speedway, and he's also running various levels of Hooters racing. So a good, good for a guy to keep your money on. He's running about 10th or 11th before he got spun. So those guys are heading back out onto pit road. That shuffles the order quite significantly. We'll tell you about the new look of the State Fair brand Corn Dogs 250 when we come back from this commercial break. Under caution here at Hickory, North Carolina, but getting ready to go green to the State Fair brand Corn Dogs 250. Clay Rogers once again jumps away. Don Satterfield in the Hawk Saw Blade, Chevy number one down inside. As we look at our Goodyear full field rundown, take note, Jeff Agnew, Charlie Ford stayed out. 
from the back of the and field to eighth and ninth. Brian, look at <laughs> yeah. Bill Clemens getting underneath Clay Rogers in the corner. Well, that time Clay Rogers seemed like, you know, Clemens had been knocking on his door yeah. and all race long, and that time it, it was almost like Clay Rogers said, fine, come on by, lead a lap, let me see what you got. And Bill Clemens Jr.'s Hooters number 15 before Torres is out in front right now. Clay Rogers getting a good look at him, and Bobby Gill watching the back end of the leader's car for the first time, and now he moves underneath. Yeah, and you, you made a comment. It looks like Clay. Whoa! Oh, oh. oh and Stacy oh. Perrier got into the back of Rogers just a little bit there and oh, collects Shane Huffman, Shane Huffman in the him. Johnsonville car and everybody else trying to find some room to get around on this tight little oval here. So Stacy Perrier, who had lost a lap earlier in the race, was up in the front of the field and uh, just got into the back a little bit. It didn't really look like anybody touched no. him. He just went around. Let's see if we can get another look as Shane Huffman gets going again. Watch, here he comes, up inside. Oh, yeah. yeah, just yeah. lost it. Clay, Clay, Clay Rogers was up up in the second groove, and uh, Stacy just got in. It looked like a little too hard. The car started oh. to push. Oh, oh Don man. Satterfield and Trent Owens got it down on the inside. And look, well, at, look at Marty Ward, Marty Ward <laughs> taking nice pit move road. Down pit road. Yeah. Slick move. Yeah, Perrier just, the car just pushed on him a little bit yeah. and pushed up into Rogers. Rogers was able to hold on to it, and Perrier led him. And here's where some real damage was done to uh, Don Satterfield, to Shane Huffman, but not to Marty Ward. <laughs> he went left of the wall and kept right on going. So Shane Huffman will take the 84 car for some attention. We'll take a break. The USAR Hooters Pro Cup Series is brought to you by Hooters Restaurants. Hooters, delightfully tacky yet unrefined. And introducing a great new dressing from Naturally Fresh. Classic Caesar, a special Caesar taste from Naturally Fresh. We're back with Clay Rogers heading down pit road. Shane Huffman, who has to do more of the same. And let's go to my friend Stephen Cox, who's right down there. Your pole sitter, Clayton Rogers, is into the pits. Now, I want you guys to take a close look at the work on this race car. Something you're going to see is a change of tires all the way around. What you're not going to notice, however, is the stagger. They're going to open up the stagger just a little bit. They're going to take some bite out of the race car because the car was just a little bit too tight. Now, when they open up the stagger, there's going to be a bigger difference in the size of the left and right rear tires. And that'll make the car roll a little easier through the corners and take some of the push out of it, which is what Clayton was complaining about. So they're going to take just a little bit of bite out, free up the rear end, and Clayton's going to go back out. And you guys saw him slip a couple of spots as well. You got the five and also the 15 of Bill Plemons Jr. were able to pass him. Pretty good stop yeah. for the guys on Clay Rogers' team. Bill Boger in the crew. Trent Owens in the 1-800-B Petty car that started from the last row with some front end damage. Lots of damage to Shane Huffman's 84. Well, you know, we're talking about stagger, and like we said, the, the car wasn't working right, so he waited a little, made a stagger change, and you'll see a difference in the way the car works. Here's another guy that's really had his hands full tonight. Stacy Purrier came in with some damage on the front right of this race car earlier in the evening. They tried to fix it as best they could, put some fresh rubber on for him, but he also was able to lose some laps, unfortunately. Our leaderboard now looks like this. Bill Plemons, Bobby Gill, and Mike Herman Jr. doing a real good job of running in the top 10 here tonight. And Jeff Agnew and Charlie Ford, they stay out. They're moving up to sixth and seventh. Great run for those two guys from the back of the field. So a round of pit stops and top 10 finishes. Look at that. Mario Gosselin, the points leader. David Pletcher, the leading rookie. Jeff Agnew, seventh in points. Why? Top 10 finishes. You know that, Bill. You got it. You know, it's not always who wins the most races. It's it, the way the point systems are designed, it's for consistency. Who can run in the top five most of the year? You know, you look at Bobby Gill, though. This guy <laughs> running second right now, and, and he's the guy that's won, what, five or four races? Four races. Four out of, five, the, four out of the last five races. Yep. And, and, but the problem is when he doesn't win, he breaks. That's right. Well, he had a couple of uh, at three DNFs earlier in the season. He has finished five races and won four of them. A very good percentage as Bill Clemens Jr. stood on the gas, wiggled the car a little bit on the restart. He's got a mirror full of the man we were just talking about, Bobby Gill, who's now trying to work him up on the high side. Uh, yep, that's what I was just going to say. He's working the out. Oh, he got a little close there, but Bobby Gill's trying to pass him on the outside. And, and what Bill Clemens Jr. is doing is he's not keeping the car down real tight, smart, 
letting the car run and see about a good half a groove up off the bottom. And what's that, what that's doing is it's taking away half of the outside groove. So Bobby Gill can't make the car work. As, oh, and he used the whole outside groove that time. He's not letting Bobby Gill use the outside groove to get around him. Mike Herman Jr. back there in the third spot in the rundown behind the, the lap cars of Hal Goodson and the number 87 of Toby Robertson. Leader is Bill Clemens Jr. as we're working on the halfway mark in this race. And once again, uh, Shane Huffman takes the Johnsonville Broadworks car down to the infield, and the damage that is evident uh, apparently is getting worse. The 01 of Marty Lindley carrying the discount auto parts colors this week as yeah. Derek Kelly's not present. Right, that, that's a new sponsor for Marty Lindley. You know, the Alleluia people uh, gave him permission to bring the discount auto parts people on board because Derek Kelly's not running this race. And, a good marriage, it looks like. Martin Nesbitt running in sixth spot in the State Fair brand Corn Dogs car, the sponsor car for tonight's race at Hickory Motor Speedway. Also doing a good job, like Mike Herman Jr. and, of course, Bobby Gill, and staying out of trouble, finding some empty room on the racetrack <laughs> and just letting it ride till you get down to the last 50. Empty room. There's yeah, no empty no. room right now. Look at this. No, no, <laughs> not around. Dexter Knife and Andy Thurman and Marty Ward down on the inside. These guys are in a crowd as Bobby Gill is following the very fast but lapped car of Hal Goodson, past leader Bill Clemens Jr. So Bobby Gill knows a fast yeah. wheel when he sees one. Well, you know, he, he, he used Hal Goodson, you know, sometimes you use him as a pit. <laughs> he used Hal Goodson, I guess, as an arrow here. Hal, Hal stuck his nose underneath Bill Clemens, and uh, Bobby Gill just seemed to follow right along with him. Hal Goodson getting his lap back and taking Bobby Gill into the lead. And, Old Gill, as somebody called him on the radio yeah. a while ago, knows that the halfway leader prize is coming up, and that's worth $1,000. And it's worth a big $1,000 to a guy, even like Bobby Gill, who says, hey, we're going race to race on what we win because we don't have a sponsor for this car. Yes, PGT Industries is on the hood. They gave us the money to build this race car. But like a lot of drivers in the field, they're always looking for a little more sponsorship help to get to the racetrack. Right now, Mike Herman's running third. Look at his left rear quarter panel. He's definitely had some... Uh, a little fender bumping in that car. Our halfway leader is Bobby Gill in the PGT Industries Ford Taurus. He has only led three laps, but this one was worth $1,000, the second lead change of the race, and it goes to Bobby Gill. You know, if I had a choice of leading two laps, it'd be halfway and the checker. Those are the money laps. There you go, and Bobby Gill looking for the next round of money laps as he takes the lead with Bill Clements Jr. a couple of car lengths behind, but Hal Goodson, you said he's fast. I, I, he's pulling away yeah, from the he, leader. He's been fa he's been fa oh, look More at sparks it. out of uh, the Shane, Johnsonville yeah, Broadworks Shane car of Shane Huffman. Well, that's why he got black flag before. Is what's happened is when he crashed, it looks like he broke his uh, the, the sway bar, the front sway bar, and, and the arm is dragging on the racetrack, and that's what it is. It's actually, it's not going to really hurt anything, but you know, there's always the chance that something could actually grind off or break off. And, uh, I think they're going to probably have to black flag him again. If I was behind him, I would say that would be yeah. wildly distracting. <laughs> yeah. Yes, it is. It, you know, it, it's and it's also uh, believe me when you got somebody that's as good as Shane Huffman at this racetrack, <laughs> any advantage you can have by having somebody being black flagged, you don't mind. Stephen Christian moving inside on Martin Nesbitt's State Fair brand Corn Dogs car, and there they are side by side with Mike Laughlin Jr right behind. Bobby Gill leads this race. He took that lead three laps before halfway. So let's take a look back at our Lucas Oil Products halfway recap to what happened so far. Clay Rogers with his second pole position of the year led him away at the green flag with Andy Thurman on the outside. And on lap number 97, an incident involving Stephen Christian and Hal Goodson in the number 45 car. A racing accident that took Hal Goodson around and a lap down. Then on lap 105, Bill Clemens Jr. moved past Clay Rogers to take the lead, and he almost held on until halfway. But that honor went to Bobby Gill, who followed Goodson through to take the lead as Stacy Perrier was involved in an incident there that also collected and contributed to the damage. Here's that blocking pass as uh, Bobby Gill followed Goodson through like Paul Horning taking Jerry Kramer into the end zone for a touchdown on <laughs> the old Green Bay Packers. And that's our Lucas Oil Products halfway recap as we watch Stephen Christian in the zero Lucas Oil Products car. Brian Vickers, the only rookie winner for the season. And Marty Lindley in the discount auto parts, zero one. Yeah, you got you to get used to seeing that yellow 
that yellow car, you know, you, we're used to seeing the green hallelujah on there. Now we got to get used to that discount auto parts. You can see a little over a quarter second between leader Bobby Gill and Bill Clemens Jr. in second place. And the rest of the time differentials down through the top five. Working on the outside of Toby Robertson's number 87. The T. Wayne Robertson Memorial Fund car. Vickers makes a move on him. And you can see it's almost four seconds back to fifth place. Brian Vickers, so the field spreading out a little bit. Marty Lindley tied for second in points with race leader Bobby Gill. And watching Vickers and Lindley in fourth and fifth on the racetrack right now. Going around, going around Joe Harrison Jr. Harrison Automotive Chevrolet. Brian Vickers, who sponsors CV Products, hosted this week's Tech Tip, and it also happens to be one of Bill Venturini's favorite places. Shocks and springs are critical on any race car, but particularly on the USAR Hooters Pro Cup Series. We have Curtis Hanquinet, two quick shock engineer here today to give us a few illustrations of why that's so. The main reason for that is the amount of short tracks this series runs. In a place like Hickory, you spend more percentage of your time in the corner than you do on your straightaways. You cannot use all the engine power you have, therefore you have to get the corner speed. Curtis, what are some examples of what a Pro Cup team will typically go through in the setup of their shock and spring package? First thing I would recommend all the teams to do is to rate their springs and shocks. If you rate your springs on a spring rater, displace the spring one inch and just read the amount of pounds at that inch and that tells you the rate of the spring. After you check your springs on a spring rater, I would recommend checking your shocks on a shock dial which checks the shocks at various speed you will see on the racetrack. Download that information into the computer which gives you a printout to know you know how your shock is working. In conclusion, the coil spring is what controls the pitch, roll, and squat of the chassis, and the shock absorber's job is to control the rate at which that action occurs. And the Pro Cup teams that can do the best job mastering the setup between these two components are the ones that are going to have the most success on the racetrack. Brian, I, I can tell you how critical those shocks are. My son, Billy, works with Curtis because we run these two quick shocks. And those things are unbelievable what you can do with them. And, and the technology today with chassis, uh, definitely the right way to go. Al Goodson takes the 45 car in. Let's listen in on Andy Thurman again. car coming is a two, and he's fast, but he's all over the track. He, he's, he's fast, but he's all over the racetrack. Well, they're talking about, about Clay, Clay Rogers. Rogers yeah. He is all over the racetrack because he's coming through the field <laughs> like a madman. Let's go down to Stephen Cox quickly. Hal Goodson may have to come in and park this race car, and it's a real shame for this guy who had run up front most of the night, qualified well forward into the field, but boy, you can really smell the grease in the rear end just burning up. And when that happens, of course, the rear end could lock up on you and make some major, major problems for Hal. So he's going to climb out and call it a night. Officially on lap 139, Hal Goodson brings the Carlin Financial through and the car to a halt here tonight. Let's go down to Steven now, who is with the driver. Al Goodson, you were really looking good out there for a little while, and you had a nice qualifying run. Tell me what happened tonight. Yeah, we um, were a little loose. We started the car out pretty loose, just for the race. A little bit too loose, fell back a little bit. Came in, made some adjustments. Um, got spun there, lost a lap. I believe Christian got me down there, getting in three. Uh, just racing, I guess. but. Um, Got a layout bag, had a good car, and then the rear let go. First ride in the car, I don't think George Taylor, Taylor Motorsports, um, Carlin Financial, and, and Vesco, great team. And um, yeah, maybe I should have known so I can get a ride the rest of the year. I sure would like to run a lot more of these races. There he is, the pulling guard that took Bobby Gill into the lead. Well, if his performance tonight shows if he's going to get the ride, he's done a good job up until the car broke. We also spoke to Brian Vickers uh, before the start of this race about what he thought of the racetrack. One thing about this racetrack, it's really tricky. The groove is just, it's out of this world. It's, it's, it's really um, it's hard to get a hold of. The I didn't really get it until I got behind Shane Hubbard. He, he, he knows his place, he really does. He was fast here last year. He won 17 races. We beat him one time and that was tough enough. Yeah, he said he followed Shane, Shane Huffman around the racetrack. Don't let this kid fool you. He knows how to get around the racetrack. Last week, he won on the, at the regular late model show here. So Brian Vickers knows how to get around this racetrack. But having Shane Huffman, who's won 19 races, I guess, last year at this place, there are 18 races, definitely, you know, he knew who to go to school with. So 
Jerry Rector moving around slowly in the Reds grill car. As we look at our Goodyear full field rundown, there you can see Brian Vickers running in seventh spot. And Clay Rogers, after pitting, is already up to ninth. And man, is he coming. As we look now, Marty Lindley, Andy Thurman, some of the guys that were out there. Yeah, Trent Owens running in 20th spot. He hasn't made quite the run to the front that Agnew and Charlie Ford have, but he's not doing bad considering where he started. Look, look at this race between Bobby Gill and Bill Clemens Jr. Bill Clemens Jr. has, has been second like from the start of this race, and he's been able to stay within a car length of the leader. Yeah, granted, you know, they'll pull away a little, but Bill seems to close it up. He's just not, I don't know if he's content in running second. He may, you know, I can kind of relate to this. I was always a driver that liked a rabbit. I, I did not like leading as much as I did running second. Now, I, I needed that guy, that rabbit, to set my pace. Otherwise, I found that I got a little complacent when I was leading. So maybe that's what Bill's doing. He's letting Bobby Gill set the pace for him. But I'm really glad to see Bill Clemens run up front like he is right now. Got a caution right now. Yep, a caution out on the racetrack, and it's because Brian Vickers has spun the 42 car, the naturally fresh foods CV products number 42. And there he is trying to get going again. Well, it's going to take some doing because the cars just keep on coming. Some people want to grow up to be race car drivers, Bill Venturini, and others just want to be flagmen. Well, we got to have everything, you know, got to have the drivers and the flagmen. That's right, guys. The race isn't over yet. Keep waving the flags. Get all the practice you can. Action on pit road, specifically the leader. Bobby Gill is into the pits. Your leader has stopped, and he has a lot of changes to make to this race car. They are going to make a two-notch change on the track bar. Additionally, they are going to make a wedge change and also a stagger change. This car was very, very loose. And you know the scary thing about this, Brian, is the fact that this team is so far off, and they're still leading the race. You see the guy with a baseball bat? No, there is no game going on here right now. <laughs> what that is, is that's, that you use for rolling the fender if there's Fender's rubbing a tire. That's usually what you use to get the fender off of the tire. Stephen Cox is now on pit road with the crew chief for the 15 car. The 15 car, Bill Plemons Jr. just came in. Dale, I understand you guys had some changes to make. No, not really. We was pretty good. Um, car's just a little bit loose in the center. Um, I tell you what, this Hooters Ford, I mean, we got us a good race car again. You know, we've had some bad luck, but we're just gonna hang out here and see what happens. I ain't gonna crow too early tonight. You know, it really looked like Bill was using a lot of racetrack in turn one going all the way down below the yellow line. Oh, I tell you, I told him to keep it on the bottom, and about halfway through, I had to tell him to get back up on the racetrack. So, I tell you, these Laughlin chassis, uh, Golden Shamrock racing engines, Carrera shocks, um, I mean, hey, this whole car's pretty good. Hey, we satisfied with it. We're just going to see what we end up with. Well, that's not a good sign for the rest of the field if Dale Burns is satisfied with his race car. That means everyone's in trouble. Well, the sun is fully set here, and we are under full lights at Hickory Motor Speedway, and it just makes it that much more special when you have that black canopy over the racetrack, and all the attention is focused on the racing surface. John Wood inherits the lead after the second round of leader pit stops. Steven Christian moves up to second, and Mike Laughlin Jr. third. Clay Rogers, who pitted earlier, is already back up to fourth position, and he is still very fast out there. And look who's running sixth, Jimmy McLean. He started 26, even spun in the race, and he's back. He's running sixth in the learning through entertainment. Patty Pan Bear Chevrolet. Yeah, but how about Stephen Christian? Started 23rd and just took the lead took from John oh, well, Wood. So the former rookie champion takes the lead from rookie former points leader John Wood. Mike Laughlin Jr. is still third in the number seven car. He started in 20th, so a lot of guys have cycled up to the front of the field after all the pit stops and racing their way to the front. None more, more dramatically, though, than Clay Rogers. Here goes uh, Keith Woody in the 83 car. The San Vic Coromant Company goes around. And Keith Woody, who's Karen Woody the Cowboy on the dash. And I imagine uh, Woody the Cowboy's got his eyes covered up about yeah, now. Yeah, definitely. I would have covered my eyes. He, he's definitely shaking up from this one. Yep, dragging some of the chassis underneath there, the jack point under the bottom of the car. Another look at it. He just, yep. just got sideways by himself here. Up in some of the loose stuff, although there is a very definite two groove wide racing surface here. From on board, hang on, Woody. You're going for a ride, buddy. 
Whoa! Whoa. Yeah. Whoa. Ouch! <laughs> Even Woody said that one hurt. Oh, oh man. And Keith Woody Jr. takes the 83 car down for the attention of his crew on pit road. We, of course, will take a break. into the pits and more action. This is the three car of Jimmy McLean, the It's Potty Time Bear Learning Through Entertainment car, and Keith Woody's climbing out to Stephen Cox. Boy, Keith, that was some kind of a smack. Tell me about the crash, and are you okay? Yeah, I'm fine. Uh, Sam, Mc... Sam McMonte Carlo is running good tonight. I mean, we had some new sponsors with us, or some possibly new sponsors. We were trying to get a good show in for them. Didn't do too good in qualifying, had to run a hooligan race, and uh, led all of it, and, and, and Showed her car was good, and, uh, just making her way up through the pack. And um, on that race start, a couple lap cars got on the bottom, and I had to go to the high side, and it got me up in the marbles. And once I got the marbles on the tires, there's nothing I could do. You know, just kind of, kind of went away from it, getting in the corner. And we'll get it fixed. We'll be back next week. We plan to run it. And we're gonna, we're gonna have a strong run there and do good for our sponsors. Keith Woody Jr. indeed was very impressive in what he called the hooligan race, the qualifying event, and uh, he just led that one going away. Going away, the you field. got that. Some of the uh, Gastonia Hooters girls posing for photos with some young fans here at the racetrack and enjoying a nice evening, as are the members of the John Wood Go Racing.com crew, as those guys have their man up in second spot, and he led, he led this race for a little while. Brian Vickers on the inside, one left out, trying to make up his lap right now. He's running side by side with Steve Christian. Yes, indeed. If Brian Vickers is going to get his lap back, here's the time to do it. As he is the first car not on the lead lap, is uh, jockeying for the lead. Dexter Knipe running in seventh spot, former track champion here, the number 55 car, the Express Personnel Everett Chevrolet entry. And there goes Vickers to get his lap back. Now, if he could just hang on and get another caution. This is going to do mighty well for the only rookie winner of the 2000 season. Now here's where Steve Christian has to not worry about Brian Vickers. Don't concentrate and worry about trying to catch him. Now just run your own groove. You're leading the race. Get into a rhythm and just, you know, set your own pace now. Don't worry about the guy in front of you. And just, just worry about the guys behind you right now. Steven Christian leading the race, fourth in points for the season, but without a win. Mario Goslin in the 16 car, the points leader, and the man who has won four races this season, battling for seventh spot on the racetrack. Bobby Gill down inside, made it look pretty easy on Goslin, the man whose uh, ninth life of that car is rapidly yeah. running out. You know, I, that's something I can't believe yet, that Mario Goslin hasn't won a race yet this year. I mean, that's kind of kind of unheard of right now with Mario, but like you said, he's been struggling with an older car. He expects to have his new car out, and then I think the field's gonna have to watch out. On board with Andy Thurman in the naturally fresh car number 47. We got to definitely make sure our camera guys keep this, this shot for the rest of the season. I love that spoiler shot. And Dexter Knipe in the 55 car, that express personnel. They're an online temp service. Marty Lindley with the discount auto parts sticker we're used to seeing on Derek Kelly's car. We've mentioned that the discount auto parts sponsorship is being carried by the 01 this week and perhaps for the rest of the season. Well, just so that everyone uh, at home knows what happened was uh, Derek Kelly had some pr uh, prior commitments with his family business. He had to tend to that, he said, and, and he just couldn't devote all his attention to the racing, to the Discount Auto Parts, Auto Parts uh, sponsorship. He was fortunate enough that they were able to work something out and move it over to Martin Lindley's car. Bobby Gill going to the inside oh, on Clay Jeremy Rogers, Bowser. but Jeremy Bowser in the 58 car. The Ingleside Interiors number 58 takes it around and gets going again pretty quickly. So Bowser returns to the racetrack, but not before bringing out a caution. Here's another look from on board with Martin Esmond. By himself, looked like. Yeah, looked like he was by himself. Couldn't, couldn't really tell it from that angle. Well, we'll take a commercial break. Everybody else will gather their thoughts for the closing laps of the State Fair brand Corn Dogs 250.
United Speed Alliance Racing 2000, the Hooters Pro Cup Series. And round nine at Hickory Motor Speedway, the State Fair brand, Corn Dogs 250, presented by Johnsonville Broadwurst. I'm Brian Drabber. My buddy Bill Venturini is alongside, and Stephen Cox is down on pit road and the starting grid and victory lane for us here tonight. Brian, look at this guy in the right rear. He started to make a chassis change to the car. Then he must have got word from the crew chief. He stopped, reversed the wrench, and, and changed it the other direction. He was putting bite, uh, taking bite away, and then all of a sudden he said, oh, wait a minute, wait, i got to put bite in. So he changed it. And, you know, I, and I've had that happen. It's a good, you know, good point on the uh, crew chief to catch that there was a mistake being made. Dexter Knipe told me with his experience here at the racetrack that the track tightens up after the sun goes down but not as much as some drivers and teams think that the mistake that many of them make is they overcompensate for the track tightening up. He's determined he's not going to do that. Let's go to Stephen Cox, who's with the 58 crew. Jeremy Bowser involved in that mishap a few moments ago, and now you see some kickback from some air pressure inside the fuel tank, blowing some fuel back in the guys' faces. They're also going to work under the hood a little bit as well, and they've got an overheating problem and possibly a little bit of water steaming out from under there as well. So Jeremy has sustained some pretty serious damage, enough to slow down his race car and force him to come in whether he wanted to or not. Yeah, you can see that they also spilled an awful lot of gas. That overflow can didn't catch much of it. Next race, Saturday night, July 22nd at New River Valley Speedway, the Kroger 250. Hope you can join us there. Beautiful facility. Sits down in a natural bowl, great seats everywhere, and even a special uh, VIP section on the pack stretch that if you've been there, you know about. As Stephen Christian takes him back to the green flag with John Wood running in second spot, Mike Laughlin Jr. There's Clay Rogers and Bobby Gill in fourth and fifth right now after their round of pit stops. Andy Thurman starts the next five. Mike Herman Jr. still hanging around in the top ten and doing a fine job racing here tonight. Jeff Agnew, the former series champion that started in the back of the field, is now tenth. Stacy Perrier trying to get a lap back on the inside and noses ahead of leader Stephen Christian. Even though he doesn't have a yeah, fender or part of a nose, ahead. half nose is ahead, right. And gets the lap back. We'll have to see if it does him any good if he gets a caution. Marty Lindley, we're on board with him. The Discount Auto Parts 01 car. Per year getting a lap yeah, back. Right. He's going to need another one if he's going to contend for a win in this race, however. And he's pulling away just ever so slightly from the front of the field. And you can see it's still very crowded back there. And Christian now is not going to pay a lot of attention ah! to a per year, but he is going to pay some attention <laughs> to John Wood. <laughs> well, like I said earlier, and as John Wood gets in the oh, and Mike Laughlin, Mike Laughlin's the side. I want to go around both of you guys. Yeah, locking door handles there with rookie John Wood and Stephen Christian, probably not watching in the mirror, but nah. if he was, his eyes would be big. Yeah. <laughs> Believe me, Steve knows they're there. He doesn't need to be looking in his mirror. He, he, you could feel when somebody's there like that. Clay Rogers and Bobby Gill behind Mike Laughlin Jr. And you know that he knows that they're there. Gill goes on the low line and moves inside on Rogers. Rogers looking on the high side and Bobby Gill just a little touch there on the two car. Another hey, little touch, touch on, on the, the seven, seven car. car. So he's letting them know he's uh, there. A lot of oh. touch on the seven car. And the two car there, Clay Rogers got a little loose but gathered and, it up. And look at Bobby Gill. Now look, yep. look at that. I mean, that's definitely the, the sign of a better. Get in there, just root him a little, touch him, make a move. They go one way, you go around them the other way. Look at this, he's going around the outside of John Wood right now. Showed him the inside, makes a move to the outside. So the chassis changed, the dues that the guys made down there to uh, Bobby Gill's car seems to be working just fine. And at will, he is moving towards the front. Only Steven Christian remains in front of him. Stacy Perrier is a little further up the track, but a lap down. And now, alongside, of leader Stephen Christian and into the lead yeah, goes Bobby Gill. The PGT Industries Ford is now the race leader. He wasn't alongside long. And you know, I, I've got to, I'm going to have to say, if I'm one of these competitors, I'd wonder about Bobby Gill. This guy is, is unbelievable. I, I'd be questioning a lot of things right about now. We'll be back to watch him some more in a moment. Flag racing at Hickory Motor Speedway. 
The leader is Bobby Gill. We're watching some action a little bit deeper in the field, and action it is with Jeff Agnew there in the middle of it. There you look at our top five, our Goodyear full field rundown. We've seen a lot of those guys. Charlie Ford, Jeff Agnew solidly in the top ten after starting from the back of the field. And there you can see some of the rest. Dexter Knight and Brian Vickers doing a good job inside the top 15, and Jimmy McLean, in spite of his problems, is 15. Good battle for third right now. John Wood working actually underneath Steve Christian, and I mean really underneath him. He's under the white line in the corners right now. Watching from on board, Marty Lindley's 0-1 car. He's right behind both of them, and there you can see them all. Some of the attrition as our Goodyear full field rundown continues there. Some of the drivers who are out of the race that began with Chris Diamond in a couple of spins early, the second of which took him out. John Wood inside on Christian, and that two-groove racing is definitely a reality now. Wood makes the pass. Christian gives him a little tap on the way by. Not much he can do except fall in line now. It, it took more, more laps than I thought it would. It took about four laps to get around him. As he, as he didn't open the door, Marty Lilly kind of slides right by in front of Steve Christian. So Stephen Christian pedaling back through the field a little bit here, and we're wondering what might be going on there with a car that was so good and good enough to actually lead this race. Well, you know, everyone's getting a lot more laps on their tires and different cars react differently on, on the older tires. And I don't think Steve's car's working as good as the rest of the guys on the older tires. And then, then you've got this guy who, I don't care what kind of tires you put on this guy, you can put on bricks and this guy seems to work good. Bobby Gill out in front again and a lot of people are thinking, oh no, here we go one more time. Well, you can't and, help it. Yeah, I know, and we've been guilty of, of actually kind of looking the other way while Bobby yeah. Gill leads the last 50 laps of a race. But you know what? The record bears us out. When he gets out in front, it's almost like oh. no one's going to catch him. Smoke oh, yeah. off the yeah. right front Jeff of Jeff Agnew's car there. You know, I, I've said it the last last race. I said, you know, what's Bobby Gill doing leading the race er that early? He don't usually take the lead till around 50 laps to go. What lap is this? You know, we're a little over 200 laps. We've got 50, less than 50 laps to go. Who's leading the race? Bobby Gill. I mean, this you can... <laughs> I hate to say it, but right now you can write a, bo a one, a one storyline about the season so far. A second and a half lead. Let's listen in to Andy. Protect Hunter. that bottom if you can. 34 is fast. He's looking under right now. Oh, he said the 34 is fast. He's looking under him right now. You know, that's Mike Herman Jr. in the uh, Carolina Truck Repair uh, Pontiac. And, and Mike is really running good tonight. Mike Laughlin Jr. slowing down on the racetrack noticeably. In yeah. the IRM Griffin it car looks, It looks, looks like management. the left, left rear tire is flat. Yep. I can see it. Yep, he's got a flat tire or one going down. But Bobby Gill, look at the record and let us defend ourselves by saying he had a DNF at Lakeland in the first race of the year. Then he won two straight at Florida Speed Park and at Ace. He had a DNF at Myrtle Beach when Marty Lindley was the winner. And Marty Lindley won at Peach State with Bobby Gill second. second right. Then it was Brian Vickers, the only rookie winner, and then two straight for Bobby Gill since then. So yes, when he takes the lead late in the race and he finishes, he wins. It's yeah. as simple as that. Bobby Gill circling around Jeremy Bowser right now and uh, incredibly without a sponsor as he as we mentioned before on the quarter panel he's not alone in that in that category but he is certainly doing a lot better than than guys uh, around him going from race to race on what he wins he wins almost every time yeah, he goes out we got to give him that credit goes to him and his determination and his preparation before he even gets to the racetrack look up, I got a, my hats off to Bill Plummer Jr he's yep. been running in the top five oh, ah. <laughs> as I watch it, don't get into him, don't get into him, Bill. You know, but, Bill wants a win as oh bad as man. anybody. He wants what Bobby Gill has had already four times this year, and that is a trip to victory lane <laughs> and the top spot on the podium. You know, I, the, I, I'd love to see Bill Plemons Jr. get a win. The only thing I'm afraid of is this guy, you know, he, he is, is one of the most fun guys to be around, and we've seen that in the past. But I'm afraid if this guy wins a race, he may just quit because he says, all I want to do in my whole life is I want to win. And if he wins a race, he may quit, and I don't want to see that happen. If the carrot's not yeah. out there, he's yeah. not going to walk, huh? <laughs> Brian Vickers, again, the only rookie winner of the season so far. The score is seven veterans. Well, seven veteran wins and one rookie victory, but four of those wins have gone to Bobby Gill and two to Marty Lindley. So two remember. guys have taken six victories he, this year. Yeah, and you got to remember, he did make up his lap yep. earlier. Sure did. Jeff Agnew with a little bit of tire smoke yeah. coming off well, the right front. But I now it's slowing down. The car's slowing down. Everybody is because we've got a caution. It was looking around the track. Nobody's yeah, spun, nobody's but it's, yeah, it's there must be something out there. There, yep, it is. there we go. The officials, the USAR 
officials have seen something on the All track right, what is that, that they don't like. It looks like a piece of lead. Could be. Very definitely something that looks like a piece of lead. Look at the faces of the guys behind the wheel. As we have said several times, some handsome guys that really know how to wheel it. We'll be back in just a few moments to Hickory. working cameraman here at Hickory Motor Speedway. And yeah, you just saw yourself on TV. Hey, and Ned Jarrett, one of the many famous names uh, above the grandstand and on the board of those who have raced here at Hickory Motor Speedway. A lot of action down on pit road. Stephen Cox is scrambling around as usual, and I'm sure he's landed in a good spot, Stephen. Well, Dave Jones has spotted the old hand lane race car, but they're starting to work on it and actually get somewhere. Now, they're taking some wedge out of the right rear. They're also going to make an air pressure adjustment. And a few moments ago, they came over and offered James some water. Here's a guy that is really, really hot inside the cockpit. And they took the rest of the water and just dumped it down his back. <laughs> oh, look at this. <laughs> right side of Jeremy Bowser's car. It wasn't flat sided like that the last time we saw it. Still having some overheating problems. As we look at our schedule for the rest of July, August, and part of September. Hope you can join us at one of these great racetracks so you can be there in person to see what we see and enjoy what we enjoy. Getting ready to go back to the green flag with Bobby Gill and Clay Rogers, two of the fastest cars on the track in the closing laps here. And it's going to be interesting to see how these two shake it out. Clay Rogers has yet to get a win, although he's qualified on the pole twice. And he's been a contender, top rookie finisher last time. Right. He's looking inside yeah. on Gill. Uh, right now, he's got, a, he's got a really good handle of car, and he's using it down on the bottom to get under Gill. Clay Rogers and Bobby Gill working hard up front, but downstairs, Stephen Cox has an update on the, on the seven car. Well, Mike Laughlin will have to make a green flag pit stop to change a tire that's been cut down. Now, here's a guy that took a car from 20th place all the way into the top five, was running real well all night long, so it's a huge disappointment. And you guys may have seen it. It was caused by contact with the number five car of Bobby Gill. Uh, it may have been by contact, but as far as I can tell, that was from contact from running over something. Because that hole was right in the center of the tire. 34 coming up there. He spotted us. He spotted us. Oh, you heard it. <laughs> Mike Herman Jr. Yeah. underneath on Andy Thurman, and there you see the result. He goes 34 thunders. Oh, he spun us. <laughs> so the play by play came courtesy of the spotter. Let's take a look. Oh, well, there's contact. Yeah, there's definitely contact, and he was definitely underneath him. From that angle, I couldn't tell if Mike Herman got, came up or if Andy Thurman came down. The net effect but, is we are under caution once again. And the packed house here at Hickory knows that this is the lull before the storm, the checkered flag. United Speed Alliance Racing and the Hooters Pro Cup Series for the year 2000 visits Hickory Motor Speedway, the State Fair Corn Dogs 250 presented by Johnsonville Bratwurst. Andy Thurman taking the 47 car around to the attention of his crew. They are at the far end of that curved pit road, and Stephen Cox is with them. Brian, if you've already been spun out, you might as well use the yellow that you created to come in. There's not going to be any stagger or wedge changes here. Andy Thurman's car is handling well enough. He qualified on the outside of the first row tonight. He's dropped back since then, but he's going to use this for some fresh right side rubber and also take on left side rubber as well. Now, this is a surprise. I spoke with the crew just moments ago, and they said they're going to take right side rubber only, and now they're going to go all the way around the race car. So Andy Thurman is going to use this and try to get back out before the pace car comes around and it looks like he's going to make it. Yeah, what, they, what they're doing here, Brian, is that they're not putting on for new tires. They're just putting on the tires they took off earlier because they're cool. They're cooled down. They're not greasy and they figure, okay, we've got only a few laps left to put on fresher tires. Mike, Mike Herman Jr. is getting black flag, so I take it the officials have made the decision that he did get into them. Mike Herman Jr. coming in to serve a stop and go penalty for 
causing the incident that we just saw apparently and just heard the crew of Andy Thurman's car calling. Bobby Kill giving him a little jump there, going up behind uh, Jim Totten in the pace car. Well, Bobby's just trying to clean off his tires. And as we say, just before you drop the green flag, clean off the nasties. There you go. <laughs> Spin those tires and make sure they grip when it counts. There you can see the field lined up behind Bobby Gill, beginning with Clay Rogers and two unsponsored cars, essentially. Clay Rogers carries the sponsorship of Fire Protection Services, but that company belongs to his father. There's nothing on the hood or the quarter panels. Two unsponsored cars running one two right now. I saw a little smoke come off the right front of Bobby Gill's car on that start on that restart. Now I'm not sure what it was, but I'm gonna keep an eye on it. Steven Christian running in sixth position. There he is, just flashing by our speedy shot. Bobby Gill edging away from Clay Rogers just a little bit. So Rogers giving a shot at him with the restart, but uh, Bobby Gill showing that he has a little bit better race car as Rogers running up in the second groove and they're running three wide behind him. Bill Clemens Jr. is there, poised behind Mike Laughlin. We're on board with Christian, watching those guys from through the windshield. And says Steve's got a lot of left traffic in front of him, so he's got to start to hustle the car. But uh, speaking of Bobby Gill, I didn't see any smoke coming off his tires. And you know, his wife made a comment. We were talking to her earlier about, okay, you know, we got to do something about slowing Bobby Gill down. Seems like when he takes over the lead, he kind of just checks Whoa. out. Bouncing off the wall, Regan Smith. Sorry, go ahead. <laughs> and his wife said, I said, well, what's your plan for today? Tonight, she says, oh, we're going to change our, our strategy. We're going to try and lap the whole field tonight. <laughs> <laughs> well, there are something just less than 20 cars remaining on the lead lap, so Bobby Gill better get busy if his plan's going to work here tonight. He took the lead still, relatively late in the race. Still three wide. <laughs> yeah, they're just going after each other, and Regan Smith keeps bouncing off the outside wall there well, in he, the Allen Engineering number, I'm sorry, the RLS Structures number 28. He needs to get in the middle, so he's like the cream in the Oreo cookie here instead of being on the outside. Marty Lindley on the inside, challenging Clay Rogers for the runner-up spot, and Bill Clemens Jr. is right behind the two of them, trying to figure out which one is faster and where he's going to go to to move up onto the podium himself. Rogers running that high groove, giving him lots of room, but he really drives it off the corner and is fighting him off again. And Marty Lindley, you know, earlier he was running under the, uh, the yellow line, you know, down on the bottom. Right, right now he's keeping Clay, uh, Clay Rogers up in that outside groove. Bobby Gill skating away to what looks like another runaway victory. We're not going to say it yet. Well, we just did. Oh! But look at this. Clemens into the back of Lindley. And Marty Lindley goes around, facing backwards on the racetrack right now. And I'm guessing that Bill Clemens Jr. will not be on his Christmas card list for 2000. <laughs> well, <laughs> let's see if we can uh, have a double, another look at it and see for sure. You, know, you can see Clayton Rogers. Yeah. Well, ah, Lindley, okay. okay yeah. Marty Lindley touched Rogers yes. and that checked him up a little bit. And Clemens got into the back. so. Not. Maybe he will be on the card list. Yeah, that, that Bill Plummins, that was not his fault. He had nowhere to go. Actually, what had happened was Martin Lindley got, like you said, is he going to hit the wall? Is he hit the wall? Oh, oh he man. just held it off. Good <laughs> driving job by Marty Lindley. Okay, now I, I, I'll give him credit being good, uh, good driving, but I think a lot of that was luck, too. <laughs> yep. Well, Clay Rogers just got a tap yeah. from Lindley, and then Lindley got a bigger one from Bill Plummins Jr., and that's the way it went. We're on board with Marty Lindley. And there it is. Wall, 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 no. No, no, no. Okay. Cool. Breathe a sigh of relief. But Marty Lindley, I'm sure, is not a very happy young man behind the wheel of the 01 Discount Auto Parts car. Welcome back under caution at Hickory Motor Speedway in the closing laps of the State Fair brand Corn Dogs 250. This latest caution is worth another look as Clay Rogers, Marty Lindley, and Bill Clemens Jr. chain reaction situation. Not that Bill Clemens Jr. wouldn't push and claw his way to the front, but this time it looked like, yeah. quote, just one of them racing deals. Yeah, it looks like Marty had just had a lift getting, uh, from getting into Clay Rogers and the car got a little sideways and it happened to get Sideways right in front of Bill Clemens, Jr. 
With the laps winding down, we have a chance to hand out the first of our awards here tonight, the Incentive Risk Management Smart Move of the Race. Just before halfway, an incident that involved Clay Rogers, Trent Owens, Stacy Purrier, and Shane Huffman, but watch Marty Ward miss it all. Down onto pit road, and that's our Incentive Risk Management Smart Move of the Race. We're still under caution here, but ready to go green, and Clay Rogers gets another shot at Bobby yeah. Gill. And Gill a little loose as he stands on the gas. Rogers holds it close. Bill Clemens Jr. is stalking them both in third spot. And Jeff Agnew right there in fourth. Yeah, that was kind of a weird restart. I mean, it looked like nobody really wanted to get a jump on anybody. It looked, seemed like everybody was waiting for someone else to make the move. Bobby Gill trying to hold off Clay Rogers, the pole sitter. And hard charging guy here tonight. But I got to tip my hat to Agnew and Charlie Ford running fourth and fifth right now from the back of the field. Marty Lindley slowing down a little bit and definitely crawling around the racetrack. The leaders are just about to come up on him on the back stretch. Whoa! A little <laughs> tap there. He almost got Clay Rogers, but I think the guy he's waiting for is Bill Clemens Jr. All right, come on, Clay. Clemens come coming on, Clay. underneath. This is going to be a drag race. Gill's going to win the race, and Clay Rogers just edges in for second spot over Clemens. Yeah, I got, I got to say I was cheering for the rookie because this way I, I don't get picked up when I, I talk to these guys. Bill Boger, former crew chief for Bobby Gill, now turning the wrenches for Clay Rogers on the two car is our W.J. Clemens Investments crew chief of the race. Congratulations, Bill and Clay Rogers, as they pull up alongside one another to congratulate themselves for a fine run. The USAR Hooters Pro Cup Series is brought to you by Hooters Restaurants. Hooters, delightfully tacky yet unrefined. And by Jackaroo Sausage. Jackaroo tastes so great they named a steakhouse after us. By Naturally Fresh Dressing. It's not just our name, it's our promise. And by Miller Lite, the great taste of a true Pilsner beer. Bobby Gill's fifth win out of six finishes and his third in a row. Here's Stephen Cox. Well, congratulations, Bobby. That, that roof does look pretty slick. You may not want to try that one. Bobby had a huge charge coming that really never quite got it. Ooh, boy, that feels good. Uh, you had a big charge coming from the 01 car. Was your crew talking to you about it, and did you know who was behind you? No, we had a good enough lead on the two car. Uh, I just had to ride. And, um, the first 50 laps in the race, I didn't think we had a car to win tonight. The car just, was, just wasn't doing right what I wanted to. And um, I tell you, we got the halfway there, and the car came along pretty good. And, uh, we made a slight little adjustment in the pits there, and it went, I guess that long green went a long ways there, and we got some fresher tires than everybody else, and that helped there. You know, that's a different story than what I got. I didn't hear anything about a slight adjustment. I heard some major adjustments in several areas. Well, all we did was just lower the panhandle bar down on the thing, and the um, car was just a little looser earlier in the middle with the thing, so the panhandle bar, we lowered it down, and that helped it up. I got to thank PGT, Automotive Special, Billy Hess, Carrera, X1R, um, my crew, man, you know, we throw together, but our pit stops is getting better now. But, um, hey, it's three in a row and five for the year. We'll take that water and go get Clayton back, all right? Thank you. All right, Bobby Gill can certainly celebrate. And, you know, I think he's really loosening up. Five wins will do that for you as we look at our race results. Agnew and Ford rounding out the top five. Yeah, Charlie Ford finishing fifth. Steven Christian. In the zero car in sixth spot, Martin Esbitt in the State Fair brand Corn Dogs, number 30 in 10th spot. Dexter Knipe, former track champion, 11th place here. Mario Goslin salvages a pretty mediocre run with a 12th place finish. Dave and Pletcher. Jeremy Bowser rounds out the top 20. Yeah, David Pletcher from the back of the field to 16th, not bad either. There you can see the rest of the results and a lot of guys that are used to finishing much more towards the front, uh, a little bit deep in the in the field. Marty Lindley disqualified for his unsportsmanlike act actions in the closing laps of the race. Let's go back downstairs and talk to the man who finished third. Well, this guy had all the company he wanted tonight. Bill Plemons, you ran really well, but at the end of the race there was an incident. Talk about it. Uh, you talking about when me and Marty got together? I think it was late in the race. We had a heck of a good car. The crew had worked on it real hard. Uh, he and the 
two car were really racing real hard. And uh, I was good on the bottom, and I came down on the bottom, and they were both racing each other several laps. And I just cut under, and I got a little gas. And I thought Marty was going to kind of fall back in. And I got in, he came, he and I got together here. It's kind of a racing incident. I wouldn't, I wouldn't do it for anything in the world, because we were racing. And I figured the track was wide enough that we could go three wide in if we had to, because we're all professional drivers, and I could have went a little below the yellow line. They could have stuck in the bottom and won one wheel high. I mean, I've seen it three wide before, and it has been several times tonight. So I stuck it in there, and, and I think Marty probably had to move a little bit off the two car. And when he did, he come down into me, and I was already up at his door, and we just got together. I wouldn't have done it for anything in the world, but, you know, sometimes that's just hard racing. And I had a good car. We kind of pitted late. And to show you the give and take, I mean, I was going for the halfway money for my crew, and we got hung up with a lap car, and I gave that lap car a lot of respect. And then Bobby was stuck right behind him, and I lost the halfway money. And, I hated that, and, and I told my crew, I said, that's my fault, and I'll give it to you anyway, but there's a lot of give and take out here sometimes, and I mean, I, w I didn't do anything like that, and I hated that, that, it, that Marty got upset about it, and, and Hooters made the choice, I think, to do whatever they did, and, but I, you know, we just did what we had to do. Well, I, I, th I think if uh, Marty Lindley sees the replay, he'll have to agree with Bill Plummins. He did have to move from hitting him and, and he got in the way and got in front of Bill Plummins Jr. Look at the points after uh, the ninth race here. You, you notice uh, Clayton Rogers is up to 10th. Charlie Ford's now up to 8th. And 56 points separate a tie for 4th from 10th in the points. Let's go down and hear from Marty Lindley. Marty, contact toward the end of the race and a conversation with USAR officials. Tell me what it's about. Oh, well, it's, it's just about the 15 car. That's the third time this year he's took me out. And uh, whether it was intentional or not, I hadn't seen the tape. I just know we're not at Daytona and you can't race at Hickory three wide. And we was on the inside of uh, Clayton there with a few laps to go trying to get by him for second. And uh, next thing I know, I was hitting the left rear and turned around backwards. And uh, you know, I I don't I don't race like that. I race everybody clean. I race Bill Plemons clean. Uh, you know, maybe the first time at St. Augustine was an accident, but you just can't have but so many accidents. And uh, you know, if that's the way he wants to race, I'm ready to saddle up. What did you ask from USAR? Well, I just uh, just wanted to just told them what went wrong, and I didn't appreciate it. And and uh, hopefully they have enough. Uh, sense to take matters in our own hand and let's get this problem solved. I'm trying to race for a championship. Uh, hurt us real bad in the points and I was going to get another top five and uh, be just right behind Bobby and I wasn't going to lose so many points to Bobby now. Uh, I don't know where we finished and uh, it's just a bad night. I really hate it for discount auto parts. This is our first night with them and uh, you know maybe we can uh, get our car fixed back and have a strong run at the next race. Thanks for talking to us, Marty. All right, thanks. Well, you know, he said he didn't know where he ends up tonight. He ends up going from second to fourth right now. Rookie points, David Pletcher is still hanging on, but to a very slim lead in the rookie points. Let's go down and talk to the top rookie finisher. <laughs> This guy is absolutely soaking wet. You know you got me too, not just Bobby. So don't start a water war because in fourth grade, I was the water balloon champion. I'm willing to take you on any time, especially if I'm sitting where he's sitting. I tell you what, this Billy has chassis was close tonight. It wasn't quite as good as the one in front of me, but hey, it's 10 years older, you know. Uh, we started out a little tight. We, you know, we didn't make any runs on new tires during practice. That kind of hurt us a little bit, but I just got to thank Schaefer Oil and Billy Hess, Racing Chat, Automotive Specialist. Oh man, deck of batteries, deck of batteries. You know, talk a little bit about the excitement between you and the Marty Lindley car. You guys ran side by side, lap after lap. That was rough. It was kind of like Coburn, if I get up on the outside and get a good run, it couldn't get by me, I could drag back by him, beat him to the line every time, but I, was, I thought I was going to run out of time there, and thank God we had those cautions and then whatever happened to them, but we're going to give that five car run if we had to bring out that new car. I tell you what, Bill Bugger, greatest crew chief out here, I feel like I won this race and I finished the second of the five. And my crew, they just worked their tails off. Heck, the average age of my crew is under 20 years old. I mean, it's just they're just phenomenal. High school kids, college kids. Way to go, Clayton. I tell you what, thanks a lot. Woo! Yeah. All right, Clay Rogers, and you know he's happy. Winning the Miller Lite Rookie of the Race for the second time in a row. He started on the pole, finished second. That's not all that impressive. What was was the way he did it. And like he said, he felt like he won. He only he finished second to the number five car.
our co-hard chargers of the race, and there are two of them here tonight. Our State Fair brand Corn Dogs Get on the Stick Awards. Go to Jeff Agnew in the number 73 Twin City Motor Exchange car. Started 32nd and finished fourth here tonight. Just a spot ahead of Charlie Ford, 33rd to fifth. Yeah, not only did these guys have, get the hard charger award tonight, but it shows in the point standings. Jeff Agnew moves up from seventh to uh, sixth, and Charlie Ford goes from 10th to eighth in the point standings. Right Congratulations now. to those two, and we want to see you here on Speed Vision next time from New River Valley Speedway, the Kroger 250, Friday, July 28th, day after my birthday, by the way, at 8 p.m. And, 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 and you're how old? What is <laughs> second to me? <laughs> our thanks to Renegade Race Transporters, the official transporters of the Hooters Pro Cup Series. If you see this rig going down the road, you'll know the whole schedule for the season. Give them a call if you need a custom trailer for your race team from a single car right on up to the big rigs. As Bobby Gill celebrates his fifth win of the season, a very happy guy that's moved up to second. Yeah, dudes, you're the man. <laughs> Steve Deluzhevsky, I asked him how to pronounce his name, www.speedvision.com. When you can't join us on the air, click online. Congratulations to Bobby Gill. Yes, you all are the man on the PGT Industries crew. My thanks to Bill Venturini and Stephen Cox. I'm Brian Drever. So long, everybody.